There's a famous study on aspartame where they fed rodents the equivalent of 30 cans of diet soda per day and found a dramatic increase in cancer. Sadly, the interpretation I see for most people is that it's perfectly fine to have all the aspartame you want since it's very unlikely you'd ever get to that point. With lead poisoning, it takes a great deal to kill you, but even tiny amounts have an unpleasant effect in the body, especially in the brain where it is mistaken for other metallic elements. You can't completely avoid lead in the modern world, or even the ancient world, but you definitely want to limit your exposure as much as humanly possible. This goes tenfold for substances that simply have no use in the human body and which you can completely opt out of. Even if the risk may seem small, we don't just face one contaminant in the environment, which is all that studies ever look at, but thousands and thousands of them. And many of them are in the food supply itself, and many of those slithered out of a lab only weeks ago. Taken together, even if these threats don't cause immediate death, they definitely are not good for your health. These unfortunate people here will be instantly killed. This circle, which I am sad to say we are in, will experience a slower, considerably more painful death. Good lord! Come with me if you want to live. Do you really even need sweeteners? Until very modern times, it was difficult and expensive to get sugar. Going back 20,000 years, the entire earth was much colder than today, and it was for many, many thousands of years. And before modern agricultural breeders such as Luther Burbank and T.V. Munson, sweet edible fruits like we see today simply didn't exist. The only sweet thing most people ate in medieval times was fat. Many people do not even realize that fat is sweet, but if you try some plain cream, you can confirm this for yourself. It's not nearly as sweet as sugar, and hundreds of times less sweet than artificial sweeteners, but I firmly believe it is fat the body is seeking when it senses a sweet taste. Carbohydrates are essentially just broken up chains of fat, and since they are broken up, they fit much more easily into our taste receptors, and they're also much more easily absorbed than fat, and that's the crux of why we have so many problems with sugar. Artificial sweeteners fit even better into these receptors, just by chance, but they are not chemicals that belong in the body at all, and they are all harmful. While they are promoted as a substitute to sugar, in reality, all they do is fuel your addiction. Like a thousand hiding voices, whispering, this is who you are. The only voice you want to hear. And you belong to it, to this dark passenger. While they do not have calories, we can still measure the damage that they do. Even natural sweeteners like stevia will increase oxidation in the body which causes insulin resistance in cells, which drives not only disease, but also hunger. So, everybody wants to know about artificial sweeteners, appropriately so. Short answer, half as bad. So we actually have the data now. The toxicity of one Coca-Cola equals the toxicity of two diet Coca-Colas. Half as bad. Now, half as bad does not mean good. It means half as bad. Right? And if you drink 10 Diet Cokes thinking, well, I'm not getting any fructose, I'm not getting any calories, then it will be five times worse. Saccharin has been shown to cause cancer, and so has aspartame, so has sucralose, and many, many more. According to doctors, the causes of cancer are seemingly magical, whimsical, and completely random with no rhyme or reason. But in reality, it is more and more experimentally shown that cancer is a metabolic disease and anything that causes metabolic damage or insulin resistance is going to cause cancer. As the clip from Lustig shows, we can measure this damage in a lab even if you can't do it in the doctor's office. That means they are also going to contribute to dementia over the time, heart disease, 
and every other chronic disease you can imagine. This kind of damage is additive, is from everything bad in your diet, every chemical you're exposed to, and from every chemical byproduct of simply being alive. All the damage of aging also boils down to metabolic and cellular derangement as well. Your DNA is damaged in your mitochondria over time, and everything bad for your health follows from this process. We found out what caused the aging. That level of electromagnetic energy could be exciting the free radicals and effectively oxidizing every piece of matter in, in its field. It makes sense, Scully. The organic equivalent to rust would be rapid premature senescence. Fasting and exercise can help. Some supplements can help. But ultimately, no matter what you do, this is what drives your death. The endpoint is different, but the pathway is the same. And we do see these problems with sweeteners. Not just cancer, but mental illness symptoms like social anxiety, depression, and passivity in animal experiments. How many people are watching this video on their phone right now, alone and sipping a diet soda? Even when people are among others, these days it seems like all they do is look at their phone and stay in their own little world. Is this all just cultural, or is there actually more to it? So don't listen to the shills online who support food industry. People like Abby Sharp and Lane Norton. I still get some Lane Norton fans pop in now and again. They rush to his defense and say how calories in, calories out are all there is to weight loss. And all the other nonsense he promotes. I'll get out of here, Homer. Homer? Who is Homer? My name is Guy Incognito. We do not wish to seem inhospitable, but gentlemen, you must leave. Yes, please leave us. The mere presence of beings like yourselves is intensely painful to us. Now things that are natural are much more likely to be tolerable, but when it comes to sweeteners, sadly, there are still issues. Stevia has many problems that could help the body in some circumstances, but it also has a chance to send you to the hospital if it lowers the hormone vasopressin too much. It also shows elevated levels of oxidation in the body, just like artificial sweeteners. While it could still be beneficial as a supplement for some people, when you drink sweet drinks ad libitum, you tend to lose track of what you're drinking and you could easily overdose. So any sort of sweetener that has these effects just doesn't really make sense to be on the market. This is also an issue with aspartame, as there are probably way more people who drink 30 plus cans a day than you would probably think, and these people are going to break through that threshold and have extremely increased chances of cancer. And if you use your brain, you can probably figure out that any amount is going to increase your chance for cancer over the long term if 30 cans a day is going to do it over the short term when you think about it people often drink at restaurants they get refills when you drink out of two liter bottles at home you may not realize that just one of those is about 12 servings most people probably have no clue that they're having that much and they probably think that a two liter bottle is one or two servings whereas in reality you're a third of the way there while well, industry studies staunchly defend aspartame, nobody denies the lethality of its metabolite, formaldehyde. It's simply a poison, and it's used as embalming fluid because it kills literally every bug imaginable, including you. Even tiny amounts can cause liver damage, brain damage, and many other issues. If you tried to put formaldehyde into a food, you'd be thrown into jail in no time. But it's perfectly legal to put in aspartame. The issue here is that heat causes this kind of degradation. If the drink is stored somewhere cool and drunk before it is degraded, only a small amount will be generated. But if it goes over 80 degrees for an extended period, then all of the aspartame will degrade into harmful byproducts like formaldehyde. As far as I know, they don't refrigerate trucks carrying soda, so in many areas, it is very likely going to be somewhat degraded before it even gets to the store. 
Now your one can of diet soda becomes 30 cans. In fact, it probably has hundreds of times more damaging material once you've gone through this process. Remember, in studies, they tend to choose the best conditions and short time frames, especially when it comes to industry studies, which are designed to exonerate their products. And you have to realize they may have done 10 different studies and only selected the one out of 10 that showed things were fine and just not told you about the other nine. If you wanted to study the worst case, it would be stopped by an ethics committee. No one would let you do this even to rodents, let alone to people. But yet it's happening all over the world every day. It's best to avoid aspartame completely, but if you do have some and it tastes off, just dump it out. There are many natural sweeteners like xylitol that are forms of carbohydrate the body cannot fully digest. These have little or no calories, and while they are naturally occurring, they generally occur in tiny amounts, and they also have many issues. Sorbitol, for example, can turn to fructose in the body. I've discussed fructose many times, and it is one of the main drivers of modern metabolic damage. Most health influencers have been quick to dismiss studies about erythritol that show it's damaging, but keep in mind that many of them sell products that contain it. In reality, it is cut and dried. This is not based on associational data. It's based on experimental data showing erythritol causes clotting. And there is also experimental data that shows that ingesting erythritol raises its levels in the blood. That's unsurprising, but just to keep your bases covered, yes, it does get into the bloodstream. I hate to agree with Dr. Greger on anything, but it really is unquestionably bad for the health. Clotting is a very serious issue and has a great deal of involvement in heart disease, strokes, AFib, and much more. You should avoid anything that elevates clotting even to a slight degree if possible. I am intimately aware of this because my father and I are both strong clotters, which is partly related to having A blood type. Of all the sweeteners, erythritol is the one I would avoid at any cost, at least for my situation, where I've had many problems with clotting. Gut microbiome changes are another issue that seems to be inescapable for these non-nutritive sweeteners. While it has not been fully quantified what kind of changes take place, the gut microbiome is still largely mysterious and it's highly subject to interpretation at this point. From my own experience though, I know that whenever I have these sweeteners, my gut becomes more inflamed over time. When I quit them, people ask me if I've lost weight, even though I haven't changed my diet any. So it's not all in my head, but it's very real. For me at least, these have a big impact and I imagine if it does for me, it probably does for millions of others as well, even if it's not everyone. Thankfully, there is one last sweet thing you can eat as much as you want, and that's the amino acid glycine. It's not as sweet as sugar, but it has the same texture and tastes great in whipping cream. It has no aftertaste. It doesn't make you feel sick afterwards like sugar and other sweeteners can. You can even bake with it and get a non-caloric, perfectly healthy sweetener for baked goods. I take 6 grams of glycine a day as a supplement, but you can safely take in much more than that. Some researchers have suggested we should take 20 grams a day, 30 grams a day, or even more. I've talked at great length about glycine in the past, but suffice to say, very nearly everyone on Earth is deficient in glycine today, and it is not easy to get in our modern diet without making drastic changes to how we eat. When you stop overstimulating your taste buds and embrace animal fat and glycine sources like broth, you will ultimately not only be healthier, but get much more pleasure out of your meals. You've been banging on your pots again, haven't you? I told you, if you keep on doing it, you won't have any pots left. <laughs>